Hi everyone, I am today in Budapest, uh, capital of Hungary. Absolutely beautiful city, one of my favorite one here in Central Europe. And uh, in today's video, I'm gonna talk more about the city and more specifically about the areas, the districts where you can stay and you can visit as well. And I uh, will add a few little gems and stay tuned up to the end of the video because I will give you also three important tips to follow. Here I am starting this uh, video with uh, area number five, the district five, which is the historical center of the city, which overall I think is the best place to stay in Budapest. Why? Because the old center is absolutely beautiful. Most of the buildings have been refurbished to the old style, a fantastic work. The main square that you see here on my back and uh, the Vaciucha, which is the main uh, street, the shopping area of the city are fantastic. Uh, um, you are really stone away from other districts like District 7 for nightlife, I'm going to talk later about that, uh, or other districts like in 9 where you can have more of a local uh, experience and you are stone away from the castle just on the other side of the river. You see how good is this location, you are close to everything and it's a beautiful area to stay. What's the drawback? Must be a drawback, isn't it? Well, the price, obviously. Uh, it's the most expensive area to stay in the city. Uh, this doesn't mean you can't find deals, but you know, uh, they're gonna be probably more expensive than other deals in other area. And uh, in saying that, I'll take you through the uh, area and I'll show you how it is, and then we go to the next one, which is District 6. Here I am in a quiet district of Budapest, district number six. Uh, I am next to the uh, main avenue, which is Andrasi Avenue. Beautiful uh, avenue with lots of uh, nice shops uh, with labels like Gucci and the likes. Uh, and next to me is the Opera House, uh, one of the places you really you want to book a night here. Surprisingly enough, this district is not actually very expensive. It's very good value, in fact. You can find some uh, uh, fantastic accommodation hotels at a very good price. Uh, you are behind also the uh, train station which means if you need to take a train next you'll be in the perfect location. Uh, uh, very well connected to the airport of course so uh, transfer wise it's uh, perfect uh, and um, you're not unfortunately right in the center of the city and uh, you will need to take a, a metro for that but the good news is that the metro line is probably one of the most beautiful you can find in the world you will feel like Harry Potter looking for the uh, seven and three quarter track is it a seven and three quarter I can't remember now so it's time to move to the new district district seven uh, the total madness district and you will see why <laughs> And here I am in District 7, the Jewish district, which nowadays honestly is known as the nightlife district. Plenty of bars, plenty of clubs, plenty of disco. You can spend the whole night around here. So this is obviously the best area to stay if you're thinking about spending a lot of time into bars and clubs. But be, be very careful, be, be very careful again because you won't have any night sleep if you get an hotel around the pub because the music is gonna go on and on loud the whole night so take the earplugs with you uh, I still remember in this street here on the back I went for the first time 20 years ago when they opened the Zimblacher the first ruin bar of Budapest absolutely gorgeous time there and uh, hardly any English spoken today it's only English honestly my opinion is not probably the best area to stay unless you select a very good hotel in a quiet area. I will provide the link inside the video description.
Oops, a quick interruption to the video just to say that I haven't included in this video hotels, just areas to stay where are the best districts based on your kind of trip. Now, if you want to know more about hotels or Airbnbs, like uh, what you should do, you should check into my video description or there is also a blog post that I wrote, I will put it here and uh, you can uh, go there because you will find a ton of information, not only about the best areas, also about, about beautiful restaurants to go, inexpensive places, cafes, uh, basically all of the places that you can enjoy in Budapest. But let's get back to the video. And here I am in the Buddha side of the city, in the district number one, and the castle district. Beautiful place, very leafy, uh, very quiet as well. I am at the moment in the garden of uh, uh, the castle, fantastic place to visit. And the view, look at the back, amazing. Uh, yes, you're not in the city, you're not in the historical city, but I tell you, even district one is absolutely gorgeous with beautiful streets and uh, it's very quiet compared to the other side of the city. Uh, so if you're after, you know, bars and restaurants, probably it's not the place for you. But if you're after a relaxing stay, a quiet stay, maybe if you're traveling with a family, you want to have uh, some time, of course, spent into the attractions, but most of the time also with a family, you know, playing maybe in the gardens, in the playgrounds, plenty of them around here. So you have this possibility. And price-wise, it's very similar to the District 5, the central area. Uh, but uh, I tell you, the view that you can get from a few of the apartments, actually I'm gonna add a couple of them into the video description that you may want to check. But let's have a look around and see how is this area. Here I am in District 9, the Soho of Budapest. Absolutely gorgeous area uh, with nice galleries around, little cafes, uh, boutique restaurants. Beautiful place even to visit for dinner or an afternoon, absolutely suggested. Uh, I love actually this area, it's my favorite probably area to stay in Budapest. In saying that, I suggested only for the long stay from four or five days on. If you stay here for two days in Budapest, probably I will stay more into Budapest 5 just because you're close to everything. From uh, Budapest 9, this area, and uh, the main street is Radai Ucha, uh, you take about 10 to 20 minutes walk to go into the center, of the historical center of the city, or maybe 20 to 25 minutes walk to go to District 7 for the nightlife. Uh, now, before closing this video, I wanted to give you three important tips about the currency and about how to move around the city and um, so this is tip number one about uh, currency but I'm gonna move first to a place where I give you more information about it the first tip here is about the exchange rate now you know that uh, in Hungary they use florin uh, so the only way to get florin is obviously from the ATM machine but don't use the Euronet the box here that you have here in my back and the reason is that they charge extraordinary fees for the exchange rate. Avoid that and you will save some money. Let me give you the second tip here about transportation. There are different ways to get around Budapest. One of my favorite ways is to get a bike. As you see here on my back, uh, there is an app you scan the code that is here on the back and uh, you get the bike. The cost is 20 florins per uh, minute, which means that uh, if you do about 10 minutes, it's gonna cost you a little bit more than uh, 60 cents, I think. Uh, so it's not that expensive and you can go everywhere. Now, the last tip I give you for the Budapest trip is uh, to download the Budapest Go uh, app. This is the app that you want to have uh, to take the transportation system. It's as easy as that. You run it, you buy the ticket, and then you scan this code, which is here, and that's the way you validate your ticket. 
as easy as that you don't need any paper you just connect it uh, uh, to the credit card uh, to for the money and that's pretty much it easy going uh, what do you want more so two apps to download for the budapest one is the mobile goal and the other one is the mall baby which is for the bicycles